really segue into uh, into the other topic we're going to talk about, which which uh, is mostly about me. I hate to say it, so we don't. Well, I, but we could just discuss it in generalities. But this was about the uh, national novel writing competition that I did this month, and it's actually ending tomorrow, and I'm 600 words away. But the reason I thought of it just now was getting back on this on this um, choke thing and this idea of pressure being off. And you guys were asking me before we went on, like, what this thing is and what the point of it is. And it's actually exactly that. It's exactly the point of it is for anybody who's a writer or thinking of writing or has ever thought about writing a novel, that to give you this absolutely ridiculous goal to set for yourself that can't possibly produce a very good work uh, of art or uh, of anything, um, and to just do it. And therefore, because it's so ridiculous... Um, the pressure's off to create anything good. And also, you don't have an, an excuse like, well, I, I, I'm too busy, or I'll do this, or maybe next year I'll do it, or whenever. It's just, no, you have to do it right now. You have to do 50,000 words in 30 days. And the thing is, there's no judge here. No one is going to judge it at all. Um, no one, in fact, even has to read it, except you, or even you. And, you could just and keep not even writing. has to, you, you but who is to going to read it? Like, I mean, not yours in right, particular, because I know you'll have people reading yours. No, but no. like, for the majority of people to do it, what what's the outcome? Like, who's going to read it? Right, well, the outcome's going to be nothing. I mean, it's just for you to say you did it, basically, like climbing a mountain. But um, just in terms of... of uh, you know, for writers and and on this this issue of pressure, I found it to be um, now that I'm almost done here, an incredibly liberating experience um, and a really great experience. It doesn't matter that what I wrote um, is very likely to be a piece of shit. The uh, the um, what it did though it was it allowed me to write a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Like the, it's the You're difference between thinking, well, someday. Someday I'll learn how to write a book, or someday I'll do it. It just when when I was told by the you know the official organization that's running this thing, you are going to write a piece. You of You know shit. what that organization no is, mistake. though. When I when I heard about this, when you first started mentioning it, and I looked it up, I thought, holy shit, they have finally done it. Like all of, like the real novelists out there who are sick and tired of all those like uh, TV guide articles about you know that they're just casually mentioning. You got some time. Take yeah. the summer off and go and write the great American novel. They're like, we need yep. to prove to these motherfuckers that they're not going to be writing the great American novel. That you know that writing yep. is not just like something that anyone can fucking do any more than you or I could right. go onto an NFL field and expect not to leave in a fucking stretcher. Right. That's yeah, what no this kidding. is. Though. I mean, an, they are um, fucking with you, Jeff. Them, yeah. I mean, among the many things I learned was how hard it is to write a freaking book. I mean, I came of it. I came away from it with like, you know, ample more uh, respect for even dudes like Dan Brown. You know, because it's like, okay, they he can do it. <laughs> he can actually physically do this thing. Doesn't matter if it's particularly good or not. He 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 can he can do it because even just the most mundane things about novel writing turn out to be a lot harder than they look. Which are, I mean, like, what, 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 so what did you, I mean, what was, what was, what was hard about it? What was hard about it was, I I had an idea for, I had an idea for a story, uh, which was based on, uh, you know, it's the old cudgel of Xanthor thing. It was a, that, that uh, fake preview I wrote for CGW back in the day that people took for being a a real preview of a real game. So I decided to uh, take that idea and then take the experience I had on the uh, Sims group for a year and uh, write a novel that was about uh, the making of this fake game. That was that was half the story, but the other half was actually set within the game itself. Um, and as the the design team was forced to uh, cope with the pressures of making this game and the the kind of bullshit uh, marketing uh, stuff that would get thrown at them and other things. Uh, that was changing the reality of the of uh, Xanthor within the game itself. So there was a little bit of uh... <laughs> yeah. What is that? The never ending so, story. Uh, say what? Is that the never ending story? Like what? <laughs> I've heard that, that kind of. I mean, and... it, yeah, it would like some some like horrible like stupid fucking idea would come in uh, from the marketing people. Like at some point, you know, they 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 want a more like urban look to the thing and it, it, you know it's a fantasy rpg and and uh some guy who was uh who I loosely based so he would he's much smarter than this uh, I I based him on Rod Humble um 
Uh, but because Rod, I know Rod Humble's a skateboarder, I had the Rod Humble character suggest that a skateboard park be in this game. And so at some point, I've got Xanthor, you know, finding himself <laughs> all of a sudden on a, on a skateboard. Dude, you should um, go rewrite it tonight for me. He skates on the cudgel. He actually mounts some trucks under the cudgel <laughs> and, like, tries yeah, to ollie on the cudgel. A, it, it, yeah, the cudgel's a whole character in and of itself. Um and, and, see, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if like at the end of the day, after you've sort of had the, the good pressure of being forced to write every day, that I wouldn't be surprised if there was something in what you wrote that you could go back and salvage and really think about using in some way. Well, right, you know? right, and that, and that's, you know, I bought the book that this guy, uh, Chris Beatty, he, he's the guy who founded this organization just with his friends, and it originally was just like, I don't know, twenty five of his buddies. Uh, back in the day in Oakland, got together and did this challenge for themselves, and it's turned into a, a nationwide, actually an international event now. And he he wrote a book that's called um, No Plot, No Problem, and it's about getting through this damn thing. And um, that's one of the points uh, that he asserts is that, you know, what you're making here is basically like a first draft. This is like something, you know, this is you're not making a publishable novel and any any more than any real novelist has a published work after their first draft. But that that's what this is. And now you have this sort of like rough stone that you can then go back if you want to and maybe turn into something salvageable. Jeff, I you mean, need he to said go, he, go and read. Yeah. There's actually a chapter in the Gladwell book. That is specifically yeah. about you know it's like it's about late late bloomers, but it's about um, contrasting a writer who didn't get his start until his forties with say uh, people like the guy who wrote uh, Everything Is Illuminated you know when he was like nineteen and did it more or less like in a single go and uh, the, the yeah. difference in um sort of the discovery the mindset the exploratory mindset that you're describing where you're going to continue to draft before you you don't even really know what you're trying to write about versus people who start with a, right. a concept and and write to that concept right yeah all i had was uh the concept and then i made myself write every single day well almost every day uh and the story kind of uh emerged as it as it went along but i mean to answer Engai's question from before about what i found difficult it was just all the most basic things that you take for granted in terms of like i, I wrote a play a couple of years ago so i know i know how to write dialogue um and stage directions and i've been writing essays and columns and whatever for years but the actual act of writing um Having two people talk, I know I can construct good dialogue between the two of them, but what are they doing while they're talking? Uh, what room are they sitting in? How do I describe it? Um, where are they walking to? All these things that um, it's just basic, you know, it's just basic creative writing 1A, but um, when you have to actually do it and make it not sound stupid, um, that's, a, that's it's easier said than done. So um, if you're coming from a non a non-trained point of view like I was. You got any I parts in the trained. novel where uh, there are like quotes from the reviews of Xanthor? You get really meta and have like a preview <laughs> I, and basically quote your, I, quote your uh, GFW column. Oh, shit. That's a lost opportunity. I'll have to do that in the sequel. <laughs> and you can I'm, I'm going right. to predict, I'm gonna predict that, that Cudgel of Xanthor will be the very last... Oprah Book Club selection. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will be. Yeah, I'll kill it right there. Um, so anyway, just I don't want it to just be about me. I just thought this was interesting, um, just from a, a creative. Dude, you wrote um, a novel aspect. called The Cudgel of Fucking Xanthor. It's about you, and rightfully so. You need, we need to, <laughs> need to hear more about this bullshit. Well, well to to, bro to broaden it a bit, because Jeff, you're pretty active on on Twitter and other social yep. media when you let people when you let your, your your fans and minions know that this is what you were about you were doing this what was the what kind of response did you get did you hear from other people who were doing it what were they saying i did yeah i heard from a lot of people who who did it and a lot of people say the same thing it did turn out that um the statistics i read about before i started were pretty accurate which is about you know at least 80 percent of the people who say they're going to do it drop out um, it's just it's just hard to do. I mean, frankly, I was for like six days in a row. I wasn't doing it, and that's a long time when you only have thirty, and you have fifty thousand words. But I got back on the horse. Um, uh, so there was a lot of that. A lot of people just sort of sharing that they were doing it too. I, there was a lot of very nice, you know, you know, dude, you got to post it kind of stuff, which I'm not going to do. You need to do that. Um, Otherwise, like this is just like. Uh... National buy no, buy nothing day or whatever all those sorts of things. 
where people just like I may post uh, I may post excerpts, but I really am thinking that I'm going to try to do something with it. Um, I actually got a very nice email from some independent book publisher in uh, in Austin, Texas, who wanted to talk to me about possibly doing something with it. And, you know, <laughs> really, before it did, before which, they even knew yeah. anything about it. Yeah, I know, Dude, which is what I said it, to man. my wife. I was like, may, they might they might want to read it first. This will be the they, cud- <laughs> cudgel they... that breaks that publisher's back. No, yeah, but no come kidding. on, dude. It's like people get people get book deals all the time without there any being any real evidence they can write. I mean, you well, know, there's, and there, I'm not, there's evidence that I'm just like <laughs> I just like that this this book's called Cudgel is Andor. Like I can see that right at the grocery checkout, right next to uh-huh. like the the Da Vinci Code, and it doesn't sound all that different for the. No, it's funny they had a uh, in they had all sorts of procrastination. Uh, devices on the NaNoWriMo site. It's like, hey, we'll help you waste time when you don't want to do this thing you signed up for with us to do. And uh, one of them was, uh, we will, it was sort of like this program somebody wrote that analyzed your title and the chance for success. And uh, I, I'm proud to say Cudgel Azanthor was so, somewhere down in like the 20% chance of success. <laughs> so. <laughs> so do, do you, do you think, do you think you will, uh, do, you, do you think you will carry on the, the, the habit that you've formed of, of writing on a near daily basis? Well, I, I am writing on a daily basis in the course of my regular life, writing this kind of fiction. I, I do not think so. I mean, definitely I'm taking a break in the short run because it was hard on me and on my family. And I, you know, I dragged this damn thing down to Thanksgiving. Um, Dude, what if the so Kajula Xanthor like fucking ruined your family? I want you to think about that for a minute. <laughs> I'm well, just imagining Jeff's, Jeff's daughter being like, Dad, God, stop with the cudgel of Xanthor. <laughs> Dinner's ready. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, well, that did kind of happen. What did she uh, think of it? Did you let her read anything? No, but I'm I'm going to let them read it and and uh you know they've been both of them have been super um super encouraging and uh, accommodating to this to this ridiculous schedule. Do you have a van in the um, novel with someone with someone airbrush Xanthor and the cudgel on the side? Oh yeah, I totally have like the cover in my in my head, yeah. Right. It's definitely so, like so you're going yeah, to so, get you're going to get Boris, Boris Vallejo to do it. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's um, I'm about. fairly certain that Jeff can send out a tweet, uh, you know, a- asking people to make potential covers for for a cudgel of Xanthor. And oh, you'll God. probably get ten or ten or twelve different options. Done in minutes. Yeah, no kidding. And please, nobody listening to this actually do that. But find something. No, but please, everyone listening to this, do that. Actually, the cudgel <laughs> for the the yes. print that we got from the GFW PAX reunion that had the cudgel of Xanthor on it. It did actually have the cudgel of Xanthor in it. Yeah. That thing has taken on a life of its own. You can't let that shit die, well, um, now, dude. You owe it now, to the well, world. Here's, here's one thing before we before we before we wind down is you got to say like why did you go with cudgel of Xanthor as opposed to say something like hammer of Xanthor or staff oh, of well, Xanthor? That, right, actually that becomes a uh, that becomes uh, one of the early uh, sticking points in the novel itself amongst the. Uh, Amongst the design team, it's an argument over I want to read argument this. over the commercial this sounds, viability of the word cut. Sounds fucking awesome. So, <laughs> so that actually was considered in the book, and they're being forced to change the title at some point because of that. Will you but send the, it to me, the Jeff? Lead at designers. Least. Yeah, I would sure. love to read. It. I yeah, think the lead designer stands firm on the uh, on the cudgel. I point. think it sounds fucking awesome. Does it have the word smi- smiting well, in it at any point? I, I did, yeah, sort of lapse into that, you know, sort of yield fantasy talk during the Xanthor section. Um, but that's just I went, I went a, a cudgel smites. That's like it. A cudgel doesn't like beat you or brain you or clobber you. <laughs> it fucking smite. It smote. You're right. It does it smite. I'll have to do a word search to see. I'm has not anyone sure ever actually... used? Has anyone in comics like ever used smite as an onomatopoeia? Like smite. Like <laughs> exclamation point! I'm sure, dude. I'm sure it's in like every other Thor comic so. ever fucking published. Yeah, no kidding. Dude, the whole thing is uh, Thor. We used to, so Thor is nothing but that bullshit. The Cudgel of Xanthor is just yeah, a rip off of his dumbass hammer, however you pronounce it. I remember, like in high school, me and my friends used to like pass back and forth. We'd basically draw a comic strip one panel at a time and alternating panels and let the story emerge as we'd pass it back and forth. And we'd always do this like Thor knockoff thing. And it was just a chance to do like what you're doing. Well, not what you're doing here, but just that whole uh-huh. like fucking stupid language, but just with the most like v- rudely barbaric scenes, like the dude would like punch through you like the troll's face in order to like knock out like the troll behind him. But then he would have like 
you like Charles stuck on his arm, so he like that, that, that around. Was, I have to flail. say that uh, that stuff was so frighteningly easy to write. It, it it depressed me, you know, like how much of that crap I've absorbed throughout, you know, four decades. It just like rolled off the tongue to slip right into that. And just in case I was uh, I was encountering writer's block at all during any of those times, I I kept handily right by my side two World of Warcraft novels. And uh, all I had to do was open up to a random page and read the dribble in there, and then I would like get immediately inspired all over again. So, <laughs> wow! Oh, so somewhere, somewhere, the World of Warcraft novelist writer guy is saying, saying that's not so easy, Green. <laughs> when I said dribble, <laughs> I meant uh, genius. So yes, yeah. Are you going to do this again <laughs> next year? I do not know at this point. I, I want to say yes, but I think if I brought it up, I would probably get smited, as it were, over the head by my wife because uh, it was really a kind of a hardship. Um, did you try to explain the plot it. to her? Did she was she interested enough to ask? Not really, well, but that's okay. Um, I, I'm good with that. You feel oh. better off? Do you wish she had? <laughs> no, not really. Actually, I mean, I, I I didn't really want to talk about it much with anybody. I just kind of wanted to do it. I didn't want to jinx it too much by saying the stuff out loud. Um, I worked out a lot of it in my head as I was writing, and uh, and I, I've i always been that way with my writing. I don't know about you guys, but I never like to talk about my stuff in progress. So it's done. So. Yeah, if you see some, I want to read it if you want, if you want my feedback. It sounds sounds pretty promising to me. It The thing is, again, you know, you're talking like fast writing in a, in a rough draft. I mean, I, when I went back and looked at some of the stuff, I only did that one day. I went back and I looked at stuff I wrote, and I never did that again because I kind of wanted to quit. Um, I do think there's some good stuff in there. I do think there's some salvageable uh, comedy. But uh, is it a novel? I have no idea. However, I well, do recommend you guys do it. I, I was going to ask, like, what do you is do you think that that you know as as things continue to change uh, in 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 media and culture that people will still consider the novel to be like the big mountain to climb that everyone wants to write a novel even even like yeah. young people now they talk about like wanting to write a novel and I think it's funny because sure. I don't know how many novels people are reading anymore but but beyond that it seems to be this kind of like amazing challenge that that everyone wants to do at some point this is yeah that's the crazy thing even about when I heard about this is like really why not a short story you know why not a novella yeah. like why <laughs> no, why true. are they going straight right. for like fucking K2 and they can't even get up the hill to the like junior to the junior college but it's, but oh, it's exactly. like a mar- it's like a marathon or a triathlon Right, it's like I mean, if you said it's like yeah, do a hundred yard dash. I mean, like you know, it's 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 over in a bit. I think that's, in the, some that's ways, part of it. Is that right? I mean, you could look at it entirely differently. I mean, I I was uh, I wish I could remember the book. I think it was called The Creative Way. Maybe there's a, a really uh, famous uh, a, a book that's about sort of like unleashing your your creative imagination through writing. And uh, the main tenet of that book is, like, you have to write three handwritten pages a day. Doesn't matter what about. it. If you have no inspiration, it could be your frickin' laundry list or whatever. Um, But uh, you could really look at this competition, or not this competition, this one-month stunt, as sort of that thing. It's just a daily writing task. Um, It didn't really have to be a novel. Um, that that was the most um, important takeaway for me. Was just it was the habit of the writing, making yourself yes. do it, um, and uh, just sort of like flexing that muscle, um, which is all it really is, um, and showing yourself that you can do it. So that that's the part that really matters. I mean, yeah, you're right. Of course, like ninety what ninety nine percent or more of the of the the quote unquote novels that come out of this are going to be horrid, but. Um, you know, all the people who did it at least can kind of say that for 30 days they wrote every single day or damn close to every single day, uh, which is cool. Okay. Right. The book you're talking about, are you talking about The Artist's Way? There you go. Artist's Way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, which uh, I've, I've attempted many times and never quite completed. Jeff, I exactly. just yeah. put um, – we'll put this in our show notes. I just uh, linked us all in here to what I suggest should be the cover. So you've got 600 words left. 600, yeah. I would be done uh, if it weren't for uh, various things uh, this evening, including this podcast, which is fine. I will finish once we're done uh, talking here. 
Are you uh, looking and there's forward no, to that? There, there's no prize. You don't win anything. Um, you get to call yourself a winner, quote unquote. Uh, and uh, right, and actually, they they do run your thing through a, a, a uh, some kind of algorithm, which I think is more than just a word count program. Because I know that one thing you can't do is submit the same word fifty thousand times. Um, so why you would want to do that, I have no idea. Um, since it's really just yourself, you're kidding. But um, anyway. Yeah. So that you could post about it on Facebook. I just wrote a novel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> however, that, would, that wouldn't really stop me from just writing 50,000 random words, right? That would probably get through whatever algorithm. 